The second day of the conference opened by bringing focus to the design and development of super tall buildings. This opening session included presentations on three towers, all with heights that had been unheard of not so long ago, one nearing completion, one having had commenced foundation work, and the last still in the design phase. First to present was His Excellency Muhammad Ali Alabar of Imar Properties, who presented on the Burj Dubai, which at the time was mere months away from completion and claiming the title of the world's tallest building. So then we looked at building designs, of course, you know, you've got great architecture in the world, and, and, if, and if you look at all these buildings, they're all memorable, they're all special. But I think at the end of the day, it's all about quality of design and quality of delivery. So the Empire State Building, and Chrysler, see Chrysler Building is not necessarily the tallest building, but when we look at the design and the quality of this building, it's a memorable building. And that's what we really wanted to do, is that we wanted to do with uh, SOM and Adrian, is that we want to design a piece of art. Alabar described the entire project as a city within the city of Dubai, where the Burj is one element within the bigger picture. This is some recent pictures of, uh, of, uh, of our site. But truly what's happening is that this site is in the middle of the city. It's an old military camp. So I, I went to the city and I said, you know, I would like to do a deal where I can do a, a great development for you. Why don't we partner on, on the site? And it was just in the, in, in the heart of the city. And the city didn't really have well-planned downtown. Uh, and that was really the purpose of, of this development. So today, this city that really serves almost 1.5 billion people, it has an interesting heart. And this is really uh, the heart of, uh, of our city. You know, many people say that, you know, it's, what's... Why build the Burj? You know, why have it? And, and I think we as human beings, we, we should be inspired in, in our business today. Uh, and I think it's to inspire our city and, and our residents. I think it's to inspire our region. That's unfortunately when you watch the news, you know, the worst news come from our region, right? And if you watch CNN, CNBC, if you want bad news, it's coming from the Middle East. It's time to shift uh, you know, the mode of thinking to, to something positive, that it is, that it can be done, a hub can be created. So we'd like to inspire the people who are part of our society. But at the same time, you know, I'm, Dubai is my city and we'd like to put it uh, on the global scene. And I think tall buildings do, be, do put cities on the global scene. The next super tall project presented by Mark Mitchelson Lowe of the architecture firm Woods Bagot was the Nakheel Tower, which gained the distinction of becoming the first kilometer high tower to begin construction on site. A project of this scale can take over a decade to construct, and thus future proofing must be factored into the design. We realize that if we've got a, a decade to build this, that the influences on, on the project over that time are going to be very great. Um, the construction techniques are going to change, the lifting strategies may change, the building services system, and also the use of the space. You know, what, what people would expect in a hotel room today may not be what's expected in 10 years' time. And the sustainability, which is always now obviously being increased in every project. He described how the form of the tower was developed and derived from Islamic patterning. It is cylindrical in form, with a central atrium and wind slots which effectively divide the building into four towers. We decided that uh, the best way was to, was to look at the four towers in, in um, reasonable sized towers. So we made them 25 storeys. So each of the four quadrants is 25 storeys. We then connected these by uh, three level sky bridges so that this formed one tower. And then this was completed with a crown. What did that do for us in, in the, the design of the tower? It, it meant that we, we had a uniform shape all the way up the building, which was obviously better for constructability, but it also meant that we had where we were spending the most money at the top of the building, where it was most expensive to build, that we had large footprints. So therefore we created the value in the real estate and increased the efficiency of the floors at the upper levels. And this was, this was very important to, um, to obviously gain um, uh, the returns that the client wanted for those high levels. So if we go back to the, to the uh, patterning that we looked at earlier, we have the 16 mega columns, which, which follow the, the 16 point geometry. 
um, the hammer walls, which created the slots through the building, and then the inner drum wall, which ties, ties all that together, and then the fin wall. So we ended up with an integrated structure that takes all the, all the um, gravity loads directly down through the building. This is then tied horizontally with the, with the uh, horizontal elements of the sky bridges, which, which form three-story belt trusses. The last super tall presented in the session was by Eric Kuhn of Eric Kuhn Associates, who presented his scheme for the Burj Mubarak Al Kabir. Kuhn described how his projects connect to the societies in which they are placed. Contextuality and the connection of the ground plane to the neighborhood are very important elements in tying the super tall to place. Represented the Burj Mubarak Al Kabir Tower, 1,001 meters in height representing 1,001 Arabian Nights. The poetry of the tower speaks to the history of the folk tales of this culture and all the design of these city centers, again, reflecting the patterns of ornament. And it doesn't matter whether it's the culture city, the business city, the eco city, or the leisure city, each one is grown out of Arabian ornament that creates the parks, the gardens, the palisade, the parkways, the marinas, and the building blocks to give identity to this new city that will open up Central Asia. On the skyline, a new tower, the Burj Mubarak Al Kabir, a tower of 1,001 Arabian Nights. Three blades rise up, seven villages of 30-story towers stacked with seven star gardens in between them with schools and recreation, retail, maintenance, and three centers of worship atop each blade a synagogue, a cathedral, and a mosque. The Burj Mubarak Al Kabir Tower tries to recognize that the role that the Middle East has to reconcile the conflict with the faiths is as much a part an architectural endeavor as it is a political or religious one. This tower will be a symbol of how the birthplace of the Abrahamic religions can be represented as a unifying element rather than a divisive element. And the parks and gardens and retail and re residential areas that scatter around the base are all inspired by the diversity of Arabian ornament and Arabian lifestyles rather than European or North American. My question is from an architectural standpoint, what are the main sustainable future, uh, features that you see um, for the future of uh, skyscrapers? Uh, yeah, I believe that um, uh, most of the work that w we were doing was really on the, on the facade work, and I think there's a lot of work still to be done on facade to, for the sustainability of, uh, of future towers. But certainly a lot of the breakthrough work was being done on the MEP and the, in the mechanical and electrical systems and um, how we were, were um, treating water and, and recycling, et cetera. So a lot of that is, is current, but there's still a lot of things that are, that are really on the edge of being developed. And I, I, that's why I precursed the, the presentation in that we were looking to, to put ourselves 10 years in advance, and we don't know all, of the, all the advancements that are happening there, but we are trying to build in the flexibility uh, into the project. And I think. Um, by building into that flexibility uh, into plant rooms, et cetera, et cetera, where we can bring in other facilities and other, other invention that may come in the next 10 years, um, is what we have to do when we're considering building a project that won't be completed for 10 or 12 years. We're all on the cutting edge of materials engineering, structural engineering, wind engineering, uh, the environmental bits, but there's not so much research being done on the social side of these equations. These are new vertical cities. They're new vertical communities. And this idea of stacking the 30-story villages, the seven villages that we had, or Mark's 25-story blocks, is, is the beginning of this idea that each, each of these villages functions like a self-contained community with all the schools and, and recreation facilities and shopping and medical and maintenance and emergency services, all those contained on each of those interstitial star garden floors. And the capacity of these projects to succeed will only be, and the only sustainability that will make them endure, will be if they become functioning communities. We're talking about uh, a kilometer high building, 
What about two or three kilometers, five or 10,000 feet? What roadblocks do the members of the panel see to these even taller buildings? We did the, the, the tower. One of the challenge that we had is that we were not really sure, will people actually buy condos and live at the 140th floor? That was a challenge for us. You know, we, we took a chance and um, beside the challenge of engineering and, 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 and the rest of it, but you know, will really customer be, be able to accept to live that high? Uh, but before that, I guess uh, cost and rate of return is a very serious issue for us. So if you tell me that, Mohammed, will you, do, will you build in a 1.5 kilometers, I'll probably tell you no. After what I've gone through, I think, you know, <laughs> no.